Greetings, everyone. This is Judge Schlackman, and in this discussion, we will be exploring the topic of the chakras and spiritual evolution. As many of you may know, the chakras are energy centers that are recognized in the yogic traditions and also in other spiritual traditions, sometimes using other names to refer to them. In the context of spiritual evolution, we'll be considering how the chakras represent an archetypal template for our development. The major chakras that we recognize in the yogic tradition each relate to a different area or aspect of our life, to different challenges that we are faced with mastering in our human experience. With that awareness, we can consider that as souls, as spiritual beings, we've come here into the physical plane, into this level of existence and experience, in order to master that full spectrum, all those different areas of life that happen to be represented by the chakras. This includes the more basic physical-oriented aspects of our experience, things such as safety and survival. It involves our relationships, how we connect with others, how we assert and express ourselves, how we are able to bond with other people, with other life forms, and also how we are able to think and feel and perceive and understand things in our life experience. For those of you that are looking at your own lives, considering the different challenges that you may face, recognize that we have as spirits intentionally chosen these challenges. The earth plane provides a lot of drama, a lot of polarity, a lot of chaos and discord and dysfunction. And that's not really a bad thing. It's actually an opportunity if we look at it from a spiritual perspective. If things were very simple, very utopian in a sense, then we wouldn't have as much challenge and we probably would not be able to learn as much as we are through the challenging experiences. Earth civilization is filled with many things that create limitations, many things that would keep us trapped in illusions if we weren't able to face those things and break through them and come to a higher understanding. We have a variety of belief systems, of traditions, of things that put us in boxes in a sense, that keep us playing out certain roles in human social reality. If you look at your life, you can see many different roles that you happen to play. It could be the roles that you play at work, in your family, in your religion, your ethnic or cultural tradition. Those roles sometimes are positive, sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're empowering, and sometimes they are not. It's important for each of us as individuals to begin to build self-knowledge, to look at ourselves, to look at our own lives, and see where we are stuck on a lower level of consciousness, and work toward raising our awareness, expanding our consciousness into higher levels. Coming back to the chakra system, the seven major chakras that we're concerned with for this discussion are the root chakra, 
which is the first energy center located at the base of our spine where our tailbone is. Then the second chakra, which is known as the sacral center. The second chakra is located where our reproductive glands are. The third chakra is called the solar plexus. That one is located in the stomach area around where our navel is. The fourth chakra, the heart chakra, is located in the chest area where our physical heart is. The fifth chakra is the throat chakra. That one is located where our throat is. Then we come to the sixth chakra which is known as the third eye. That chakra is located in the middle of our forehead. And the seventh chakra is the one located just above our head, the one known as the crown chakra. Each of those pertains to a different aspect of our life. So we have the root chakra related to physical survival, to those basic physical needs, to security and safety. And that chakra is one that we all deal with to some extent at different times in our life. The second chakra, the sacral center, relates to our creativity and sexuality. It's the center of creation and procreation. Of course, with sexuality, sex isn't just about procreating. It's also about the energy exchange and using that energy for other creative purposes, perhaps. Next, we come to the solar plexus. That is the center that concerns our personal power how we are asserting ourselves, how we are projecting ourselves in the world around us. It's also about how we process and digest our life experience. The fourth chakra, the heart center, is the major emotional center. You can think of the heart as the central processing unit of your emotions. Emotions can relate to other organs as well, but they first are processed through the heart. The heart is the center of compassion, of empathy, of love. So as we develop our heart, we are able to connect and bond more with others. The next chakra, the fifth chakra, is the communication center located in the throat area. This is where we access the power of our voice. It's also where we are able to hear, to listen. The sixth chakra, the third eye or brow center, is the one that pertains to our vision, to how we are seeing, perceiving, and understanding things. And the seventh chakra, the crown, is the center that connects us to the spiritual realm, to what you could call a higher power or divinity. As we evolve and advance in our experience as human beings, we want to develop those energy centers. We want to master the challenges of each chakra so that we can be full, empowered beings. The chakras are often visualized in association with the colors of the rainbow. So the symbol of a rainbow, besides the other uses it may have in our culture or society, it can represent a fully awakened being, someone who has mastered all of these different issues and challenges in life and is able to operate, to live 
with the resources that are developed on all those levels. Looking at the society around us, we may notice how we are often suppressed, how our spiritual development is short-circuited or blocked by influences that are around us. It's up to us, each one of us as individuals, to recognize that and to overcome those challenges, to transcend the limitations that Earth civilization presents to us. At the level of the first chakra, there are, of course, many things going on in our world that could threaten our physical safety or survival. There are perhaps shortages of food, war and violence occurring, natural disasters, anything that could threaten that sense of stability or safety could be a challenge at the level of the first chakra. Coming up to the second chakra, this is where our intimate relationships are often quite significant, and also our ability to feel good about expressing our creativity. When we use our creative skills and talents in a positive, constructive way, we're helping strengthen and balance this second chakra area. When we feel comfortable and confident with ourselves as creative and sexual beings, we're also strengthening and balancing this second chakra center. The society that we live in carries a lot of judgments, a lot of imbalances and obsessions pertaining to the sexual energy, the sexual center. This includes things like pornography, rape, beliefs about sexuality being impure or sinful in certain contexts. A lot of people become attached to different beliefs that relate to their sexuality that make them feel ashamed or confused. Those beliefs, in a sense, create congestion or blockage in the energy flow. Coming next to the third energy center, the solar plexus, we have influences in our environment, which could be from our family, our school, our peers, our religions, our corporate workplace, things like that, where people are not allowed to fully express themselves, to be authentic, to assert what they believe, what's important to them. So we're often led to conform, to get along, but that's suppressing our own individuality, our own personal power. There are also situations where people are encouraged to over-express or over-exert their power and control. So certain roles or positions in society where a person is expected to act in a domineering or authoritarian manner, to not be considerate of others. That could create another disturbance in the solar plexus area. Next, we look at the heart center. And here we have people dealing with grief, with heartbreak, with any type of loss of a relationship that was important to them, where there's emotional pain present and the person wants to protect themselves from pain. In order to do that, they may close up their heart. They may restrict themselves from forming those deep bonds 
due to that fear of experiencing pain again. In the society, the culture that you live in, there may be restrictions about how you're able to express love and affection or compassion to others. If you look at the different roles that are present in our society, you'll find particular ones that greatly discourage showing empathy. Someone who's stuck in that role for a, for a while may become trapped in that way of thinking or acting, having the belief that it's not healthy to truly express what you're feeling, or that it's not healthy to open up to others to form those types of deep, intimate bonds. Next we come to our fifth chakra. This is the throat center. And this is where we use our voice, sometimes literally and other times metaphorically. By using your voice, you are expressing your truth, what your values are, what your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs are. And perhaps you're having a dialogue communicating about that with others so that everyone can benefit, so that you can learn from them, they can learn from you. We can each grow as we're able to receive the information about the other perspectives that exist around us. Communication can be very valuable and empowering in that way, as long as we're open and allowing for others to have their opportunity to speak. However, in the history of human civilization, there have been many groups or forces at work that are not allowing other people to have their voice. Censorship in many different forms. So that censorship could be subtle, where it's looked down upon or disapproved of if you express certain beliefs or opinions. It could be more overt and more aggressive where someone is actually punished or harmed in some way, physically even, for speaking out. In our society we have something called whistleblowers, which are people who are blowing the whistle on something they perceive is unjust or inappropriate in whatever place in society they're observing. The very fact that we need to have a special set of people called whistleblowers can imply that often people do not speak up about things that are going on around them. We also can look in this context at the spread of information in our society. In traditional past generations, there is a lot less exchange of information than there is in our current generation here in the early 21st century. So in past times, people were more insulated. People would often only associate with those who might have similar cultural traditions or beliefs or belief systems. So they might not be confronted with seeing and hearing other viewpoints. In our modern era, it's becoming more difficult to be isolated, to be separated from other views, other sources of information, and so on. In the long run, this may be a very positive, advantageous thing. It can, in some sense, speed up or stimulate our evolution as we get to hear more ideas, to access more information, to no longer be isolated from one another and from the greater whole. Next, we're coming to the sixth chakra. This chakra relates to our vision, to our perception, 
how we see and understand things. At this center, there are often blocks or congestion created due to people not being willing to see things, whether it's looking at their own shadow material, their own weaknesses, or seeing things externally, so looking at the realities of the world around them. If there are unpleasant realities in our world, there are going to be some people who don't want to face those, who don't want to look at them. So if we prefer comfort and security, we may block our vision to things that could be challenging to that. There's a phrase called cognitive dissonance, which applies to confronting new information or experiences that challenge our existing comfort zone or our existing world view. Being open to work through that cognitive dissonance could allow us to expand our perspective and open up our third eye more. There are also things that are present in our society, in our modern environment, which may in subtle ways be blocking the third eye. Things such as electromagnetic technologies, also fluoride that's added to toothpaste and drinking water, and present in other environmental sources. So those things can affect, from the physical level, how our energy centers are functioning. Next, we're coming to the crown chakra. As I mentioned before, the crown chakra pertains to our relationship or connection to our spiritual source, to God, Great Spirit, the Divine, whatever we may wish to call that supreme being or that unlimited essence. If we have any negative beliefs concerning our relationship with the Divine, that will tend to create a blockage or barrier to the energy flow for the Crown Center. This could be related to religious beliefs that people have been programmed with, such as the belief that they're sinful, that God is judging or condemning them, that they are not worthy, things of that nature. It could also be that someone has a mind that's closed to ideas about spirituality and the supernatural. If someone just believes that there is no greater spiritual reality, that the physical realm of the five senses is actually all that there is, and that when your physical body dies, that's the end of your existence, that creates a limitation at the level of the crown chakra. So if we wish to open that center, it's helpful to explore our beliefs about life and spirituality, our beliefs about our own identity, about the nature of God and creation. It's helpful to use techniques or practices that help us relax our mind and become open to experiencing deeper layers or levels of our consciousness. Now, I was brought up here in America, exposed to many different aspects or qualities and characteristics of our modern civilization here. And I've noticed that society in general does not promote our spiritual development beyond a superficial level. We have different religions, different belief systems that do support the idea that there is a higher power, that there is a God, but they often distort that. 
there's also many things about our society that don't encourage us to be authentic, to fully express what we're feeling, to speak our truth. We're also often encouraged to compete to an extreme rather than to balance that out with cooperation. Any of you who would like to look at your own life, your own experiences, your own interactions with your family, with your school environment, your work environment, your religion, your political affiliation, whatever those things may be, you can see where there are things that could potentially create limitations for you. It's up to you to honestly analyze those things, to honestly face them, to consider what's important for you. Is it important to conform, to have the approval of your neighbors, of your family, of your co-workers or bosses? Is it important for you to seek higher truth and understanding? If we have really high goals, really advanced priorities, those may come into conflict with some of the more basic goals and priorities people have. So we may have to let go of certain things in order to pursue other things. If you have a family that rejects your beliefs, that rejects your values, you may have to in some way disconnect or distance yourself from the relationships in that family in order to further your development toward the things that are important for you. Neither path is right or wrong. It's really all up to you. We're all free to create whatever life experience we desire to. It's helpful to consider that our soul, our higher self, had a preset plan for our particular lifetime, kind of a basic template or blueprint for the types of experiences that we would be pursuing, the types of challenges that we would be facing and working through. So things were kind of already set in motion before your physical birth. It's also helpful to consider that our soul is experiencing, it's projecting itself into many different lifetimes, which may appear to be from different times, from different historical periods, but from a higher perspective, time being an illusion, all of those experiences are happening at once within that higher field of consciousness. That may be a lot to wrap your mind around, but of course the mind has inherent limitations, so it can keep us from perceiving those more expanded realities. That's where meditation, where spiritual practices are helpful in allowing our mind to let go so that we can experience deeper levels of awareness that are not restricted, limited, or filtered by the different thoughts and beliefs that we've been programmed and entrained to. I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to explore this topic to listen to what I've had to share. I encourage each of you to do your own personal research, your own explorations and investigations, to experience things for yourself, to not just take my word or anyone else's word for the things that are presented to you. Each of us has an intelligence that we can use we're each part of that higher consciousness, 
here to explore life, to gain experience, to expand our perspective. So there's always more opportunities to grow and evolve. For those that would like to hear more of what I have to share, you can visit my website at www.phinsights.com. You can also find my Facebook profiles, Jedi Shaman Reiki, and also Jedi Holistic Healing. It's been a pleasure to have this interaction with you whenever and wherever you may be. Namaste.